now we will see more details of this pipelining one important detail i would like to discuss is you know about write back stage and decode stage just recall in write back stage what we are doing generally in the write back stage you will be writing the register right in the register file maybe your instruction is like this add r1 r2 r3 then here you will be writing r1 correct that means you are adding r2 and r3 in the earlier stages then after that we will be uh, storing the result in r1 correct so at the same time if you see there is a decode stage see this scenario entire scenario okay so sometimes it is possible that write back stage and decode stage will happen in the same clock cycle so what happens then what is the problem there are two independent circuitry right yeah though it is you know they are not actually exactly independent circuits the reason write back stage is accessing register file right it is writing something into register but in the decode stage we are reading the registers correct example let's say you have an instruction add r3 r1 r2 then in the decode stage you will be reading r1 which is currently being written right that means someone is writing into r1 and you want to read it if at a time both things happens then unexpected results come right so that's why what i would like to say is there should be one systematic order so always you can assume like this so this is your clock cycle a particular clock cycle and remember one thing every generally we design our pipelining in such a way that every stage can be completed in one clock cycle okay let's say this is you know a clock cycle and this is the duration now i can say that this is the first half this is the second half so your circuits generally will be designed such a way that especially when uh, this kind of things then writing will be what i can do is in the first half then i will try to i design my circuit such a way that the in the first half writing will be done because that should be done first right second at the same time to not to collide with this write back stage in the later half that means in the second half we will be reading okay so if you do that see this picture clearly explains you in the same clock cycle in the first half i will be rewriting and in the second half i will be reading so that the data which is written by this write back stage will be taken there will not be any problem but sir why don't you do like this sir how in the decode stage in the first half you read in the write back stage in the second uh, half you write if i do that definitely you get the wrong answer because if you consider these two instructions add r1 r2 r3 and add r3 r1 r2 you tell me which one should occur first should we read the data for first or should we write the data first definitely we have to write because this is the first instruction right so that's why i can say that if you do like this then definitely you get wrong answer because first you will be doing this one that means the later instruction is reading r1 but it's supposed to read the updated value but the updation is taking place in the next uh, half cycle that's why this is not a right way right so that's why by understanding the circuitry and requirements i realized that the writing should be done first in the first cycle or first half of the cycle in the reading can be done in second half in that way generally people do remember that fact okay now finally whenever you have write back stage and decode stage they can overlap there is no problem but to i mean solve the problem we have a problem you understand to avoid the problem of you know getting the wrong answers writing should be done in the first half reading should be done in the second half in that way generally people plan that is one architectural trick i can say okay now apart from that still you need more details okay i am going to add one by one so you understand the basic pipelining i understood but we have to <clears throat> learn so many details like you know this is one detail you should learn to solve the gate problems clearly second thing what i am going to cover now uh, this forwarding right in the forwarding sometimes what happens we cannot do the forwarding then what we do then we introduce stall cycles i am going to explain you how this stall cycles will be introduced okay what is this stalling stall cycle okay we will see that 
So now let me focus on operand forwarding again and this stars. Now we will see operand forwarding details. Already we have seen how to do operand forwarding, right? But now we will see uh, in a more clear way, okay? Example, let me take add R1, R2, R3 and add R3, R1, R2. Let me show what happens to these two instructions in the pipeline. So generally we write this kind of, you know, multi-cycle diagram, okay? Now you see, fetch, decode, execute, memory, write back stages, right? Sir, what is this one? Decode stage. Then what is this one? Decode stage. What is the difference? This is same decode stage as this one. These two are same, but we are writing two times, okay? So these stages are explaining first instruction. These stages I am using to explain you instruction two, but we have only one fetch stage, one decode stage, one execute, one memory, one write back, okay? That you should understand. So this is a buffer between fetch and decode that is fetch decode buffer. Similarly, decode execute buffer, execute memory buffer, memory write back buffer. So this fetch decode buffer, this fetch decode buffer are same, but they represent different content depends on the cycle. Example, at the first clock cycle, what is going to happen, you know, fetch will be happening, okay, because of the, your control circuitry then automatically instruction will be fetched because program counter will have that uh, address of this instruction. That's why this will be fetched. Now I can say that at the end of the fetch, then instruction one as it is will be forwarded to this buffer. So I can say that the importance of this buffer is remembering instruction number one, otherwise pushing instruction number one to decode stage. Now let us just focus on this first line, okay, so that we can understand entire story about instruction one. After that in the second clock cycle, what happens to this instruction one, you know, then this instruction one already we have in this buffer, right? Then this decode stage at the second clock cycle is going to understand this instruction one. That is what the meaning of decode. It will decode the instruction one and it will understand the binary patterns and it will realize that that is add instruction. Then appropriate control signals will be generated. So example, to do execute add instruction, what are the things we require? We know that, you know, we have to do so many things. They are all called all micro operations, right? To do all these micro operations, we require some set of control signals, C1, C7, C9, everything. So all that signals will be whatever the signals you want to enable. Example, program counter should be enabled or not. Did you remember we had program counter enable bit? Then arithmetic logic unit, adder should be enabled or not, yes, for this instruction adder should be enabled. Then what is the signal for that, C9, in that way, all that control signals will be sent through bits, okay. Now you can understand like this, this buffer is going to have, because of this decode say stage, we will send some control signals which are required to do the remaining calculations or you know remaining operations. So these control signals are very important, they are going to decide which machine should work, okay, whether adder or subtractor or multiplier, should we access the memory or not, should we store the result back or not, okay, everything will be decided by this control signals. Apart from that, the essential data, what is the data? In the instruction already we have, you know, R2 and R3, then the content of R2, content of R3 will be taken from the register file. I can say that because of the decode stage, so there will be register file, right? So in the register file, R2 will be selected, R3 register will be selected and the content let us say 20 comma 30, then 20 comma 30 will be sent here. Uh, though I am writing R2 and R3, that means the content R2 and R3 will be moved to this buffer. Now I can say that at the end of the second clock cycle, this buffer is going to have 20 and 30. Apart from that, R1 also the identifier of R1, example let's say identifier of R1 is something R1's address in the register file is 01, otherwise let us assume, uh, actually it's a 5 bit number, then what we do is we just assume that it's R1 address, okay. The difference between R1, R2, R3 is nothing but the content of R2, R3 will be taken because of the decoding, then address of R3 will be taken, that is already mentioned in the instruction, sorry, address of R1. Okay, example address of R1 is something XYZ, okay, R1 means XYZ, then XYZ will be passed. Sir, why XYZ is required? Because in the later stages, this executor is going to add that 20 comma 30, it gives result 50. So I can say that, let's blindly follow so that you can understand. 
So the execution stage is going to add 2030. That's why this buffer is going to supply the 2030. Then 2030 will be added. So that 50 will be passed to this buffer. Sir, why we are passing the result to the next stage? Because in the write back stage only we are writing the data into register 1. That's why. So 50 is really has to be passed. One more thing to be passed is XYZ. Okay, XYZ is nothing but address of R1. That means, sir, content of R2, content of R3 are going to be lost here. Yes, we don't want them, right? The purpose of content of R2, content of R3 is only for addition. In that way, you can clearly understand what is happening in this pipeline. In the memory stage, what happens? Since this is add instruction, nothing will happen. It's like, you know, just doing time pass, okay? So, we don't do anything. We spend that clock, you know, we just spend the 10 clock and we do nothing, okay? And we simply, in this clock cycle, I can say what we do is we simply move this 50 here and we move the address here. So that when in the fifth clock cycle, write back stage is going to add 50 in the register XYZ. So that register XYZ means 50. So this is the way add instruction will be executed. At the same time, see, one, you know, parallelly second instruction also will be executed. Let us see second instruction independently after that we will club them in the second instruction actually what happens is r1 and forget about instruction number one first of all instruction two will be fetched here then let me go a little bit quick because you understand this one right so that i2 will be decoded so that you know content of r1 see r1 and r2 content of r1 will be read content of r2 will be read right so we are reading here from the register file here then address of r3 address of r3 let us say abc abc then abc will be forwarded okay now r1 r2 means content of r1 and r2 abc means address of r3 will be forwarded so execution stage will take r1 and r2 as input such a way we have to design the circuit so that it will add them because instruction is add so appropriate that's why the control signals which are which we are carrying see one more thing you remember here we are carrying control signals right some of the control signals will be discarded here. Why? Because they are might they might be useful only for execution stage. Remaining control signals will be passed here, which are related to memory stage, write back stage. Now after that, some partial uh, control signals will be used here for memory stage. Remaining control signals will be passed in that way. Control signals also will be pipeline or passed. Okay. So that these control signals are control signals, few control signals which are really important to do write back of instruction number one in that way okay so now let us focus on i2 in the i2 finally we decoded the instruction and we forwarded some information now from now onwards i ignore that control signals part only i show you important details so execution will add r1 plus r2 right we get r1 plus r2 as one content second one abc will be forwarded then after that memory stage will just simply push that r1 plus r2 here and abc here so that write back stage is going to write r1 plus r2 into register r3 so this is the way things are going to work but there is a dependency actually correct you know that see you are modifying r1 where are you modifying actually in the write back stage right but you are using r1 here right in the execution stage here you are taking r1 this r1 comes from the decode stage right so the decoder brought r1 from the instruction that means that is coming from instruction right that means decode stage is reading the register file i can say so this decode stage is taking the wrong data or old data that's why we do operand forwarding how to avoid that you tell me where is the fresh data of r1 fresh data of r1 is available at right back stage that means here we have you know that r1's data is supposed to be 50 right 50 is available here available here that's it after execution stage that's why we have to connect this buffer to otherwise you know connect this result to something else what we are going to do that's why in our circuitry so this there will be a cable like this it is nothing but data from execution stage that should be connected to where either because you are going to use it for r1 right we have to connect it to buffer like this okay one comes from decode stage another thing comes from this one so that example here abc right so what is r1 here sorry r1 is nothing but here only right so in that way this cable that's why this is operand forwarding now if i take execution result 50 into r1 
rather than this one depends on the circuit i am not saying that always we have to forward we have to forward when it is necessary correct example here it is necessary that's why there will be a multiplexer that multiplexer is going to decide whether to take this one or this one such a multiplexer we have to design without that you know don't think that everything will be done automatically pipelining will have some control circuit again so pipelining circuit otherwise i can say we are doing forwarding right for forwarding there will be a circuit called forwarding circuit so that forwarding circuit we have to realize we have to design so that it should respond appropriately i will tell you the functionality of that circuit what that circuit should do is it should somehow understand that there is a dependency between these two instructions that means first of all this r1 should be written then only that uh, r1 should be read you understand that right so appropriately so that circuit should bypass the data right so there should be a cable like this but it should not be used always what we have to do is based on this instructions after observing the instructions automatically the circuit should pass that value from here to here sir how to design that circuit very simple actually what happens you know in the decode stage we will be you know example at third clock cycle okay at third clock cycle if this decoder is having instruction 2 and executor i can say is having instruction 1 so we'll do some modification so that we can design this circuit what is that modification is let us have appropriate identifiers assume that so we have identifier r1 identifier r2 identifier means address okay you have address of r1 address of r2 address of r3 which you are passing every time okay that means when you are instruction 1 is at execution stage let's say this buffer is having all the identifiers now when this decoder is decoding the second instruction or whatever the instruction that side identifiers are available in this buffer now what i want to tell you is you design a circuit such a way that this identifiers this identifiers can be taken so what sir if i can take identifiers from this buffer and this buffer what i am taking you know example at third clock cycle what i am taking you know the identifiers of instruction 1 identifiers of instruction 2 can i say that by that time whenever you are decoding by that time you have identifiers of instruction 1 and identifiers of instruction 2 especially interesting identifiers you know destination of the first instruction that means destination of this buffer okay and sources of this buffer let us try let me take this circuit is taking always you know uh, source identifier from the execution stage source identifier from the execution stage if i take at third clock cycle that will be definitely sorry destination identifier from the execution stage it takes then it will be r1 and source identifier from the decoder stage if they take source identifier source r1 r2 r source then you see you will be having r1 and r1 r2 then the circuit should be designed such a way that it should compare r1 versus r1 and r1 versus r2 yes it is possible just design a comparator comparator circuit can compare two binary patterns so r1 r1 should be compared r1 r2 should be compared if let us but sir you, uh, sir already we know that you know they are matching right why should we compare that is already because you know right generate will be like this ri rj rk okay ri is nothing but source identifier from the first instruction uh, destination uh, sorry destination identifier from the first instruction rj rk are source identifiers from the second then you compare like this if ri equal to rj that means the destination matches with first instruction destination matches with one of the source otherwise you compare ri comma rk after comparing such a comparator if you design then it will decide whether there is a hazard or not correct yes that's quite easy finally i would like to say that yes such circuit is possible try to understand in high level then go go to low level don't try to think in low level first of all when as a human being can you say that there is a clash right because you know you are reading from r1 you are writing into r1 so this identifier is already available here your decoder circuit sorry you are uh, that hardware circuit which is generally related to this operand forwarding will identify the hazard then appropriate action it can take to take the appropriate action then we will be forwarding otherwise we will be doing some other stuff we will see there are two things generally we do 
if there is a hazard then probably we can do operand forwarding sometimes operative forwarding might not work example you have load instruction when operating forwarding will not work if data is not available simple if data is available always we can go for forwarding now generally whenever data is available then we do operand forwarding then we generally do operating forwarding in two ways okay how i forward the data is from the memory stage to execute stage otherwise execute stage to execute stage okay example here i am moving the data from because data is available here right execute you see from the execute stage i will be moving to execute stage right so moving from execute to execute means my intention is the output of the execute stage is moved to input of the execute stage such a way we have to design a circuit understand so this is a forwarding correct but see don't understand this like this this e this e same but only this difference is timeline correct that means execute stage should be connected to execute stage that's it in the one line if i show this is your execute stage that is giving a output right that should be connected to again like this and normal input generally for execution stage input comes from the decode stage you know that apart from that we should get one input from execute stage now whenever the circuit detects hazard then input should be taken from the execute stage rather than from the decode stage because the input from the decode stage is wrong understand so that is this is the typical circuit we use for operand forwarding this is from execution stage to execution stage one more thing is possible which is memory stage to execute stage what we do is we connect memory stage to output to execute stage actually it is like this but since we are taking two times then it would be easy for us to show like this the memory stage output to execute it depends like you know at this moment it is not required but generally we do sometimes i'll show when we do memory to execute okay generally we do that for load instruction followed by add instruction let us see that also 